For the next question? Yeah, what about you? Me? Yeah. Five to ten years? Yeah. Jeez. Please, no kids. <laughs> I'll be, in five years, I'll be 26. That was a good time to have kids. Yeah, maybe. It's a good time to have kids. I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to stay in the country, but I've always said that when I was younger as well. Mm. It's, it's, I, I, I've always, I think I get it from my mother, but I always like exploring. And also, it's countries. It can be some something else sometimes. <laughs> but um, personally, I'm still trying to figure out music and where I'm going with that because it's not easy. And I don't know where I'm going, if that makes sense. I've done it for so long and uni kind of dried me. Like, I'm like just just plain just ugh. <laughs> yeah but that's with everything in life yeah. you've got to find that sweet spot of why why you fell in love with it in the first place this is the striving butterfly podcast Like you go to uni to learn things that you already know, but to deepen your knowledge and your understanding. And it's it's not there to tell you to love this subject even more. It's there to give you all the tools to say, I know this, I can do this. Now, how am I going to apply this when I leave? Uni never sets you up to get a job. Never does. It doesn't give you the tools to create your CV. And in some, if unless you do it, you don't even get the experience. Yeah. So it can very much drain you. But yeah, I, I went to uni. I did the business side of fashion. Yeah. I work for a financial company right now. <laughs> um, at, the, at the moment, it's very much, do I keep doing music just to keep me happy whilst doing something else that makes me money? It's what, it's what my dad does, what you do you have a job and then you do what makes you happy so maybe I keep keep trying to find my happiness in music like I always have try make music again because after first year of uni that just went um but my main focus at the moment is my studio I want to get that up and running I want to isolate it and put in whatever security I need to to make you happy (laughs) Um, in the next 10 years I want to at least do two tours, three tours globally when and you say tours, what do you mean? sound engineering tours I want to at least be either monitors or front of house monitors is the, what you don't see so whatever the musicians have in their ears and then front of house is what everyone else hears by the way um, but I want to at least be able to say I've done that and I'm I've also looking into what it, what was the cost and the labour and everything of owning a big studio like Abbey, for example, Abbey Roads or yeah, a private one where people come and can be themselves but also get that luxury of life. Because I feel like a lot of studios right now are just you book it you go there's no real experience unless you're going to some big studio but why can't everyone get that experience in a smaller studio no a big studio with a small studio as well yeah that's that's the plan so far career-wise personal i don't know that's a hard one um at the moment tomorrow's my anniversary for three years with my partner and that's going really well so I do hope to see where that goes in the future and um recently had a conversation with someone about getting baptized so that's also something I'm thinking about Does well it- you just gonna throw that in there <laughs> boom <laughs> like oh my gosh <laughs> I- <laughs> you are so I answered 
so yeah so there's there's a lot that i need to figure out maybe next next year we ask the same question and the answer might be a bit more in depth on what's going on that was in depth oh okay that was very in depth because you already have a plan you just got to apply yourself to the plan so how are you going to do the tours how are you going to get there yeah Let's see right. that that's the plan if that's if that's your goal and you want to do that over a course of five to ten years work all the way back yeah. how do you get there you want to run a studio and you want to build an experience whatever the size it is how do you start you start small you got to have certain skills in regards to um business yeah financial you need equity, you need some savings, yeah. you need, you might need some sponsors. Still thinking about the app. Well, that's something else. <laughs> but yeah, you've got a plan. It's now, how do you execute it? Yeah. Don't take your age for granted. Don't take your age for granted. There's lots of schemes, initiatives that will actually pour money into you and invest in you. Yeah. See what opportunities you can gain out of that because... You start in something very simple can definitely explode into something big. Like, yeah. for instance, um, Patty Box. Mm. Patty Box was started during the pandemic. Just someone who wanted a patty <laughs> couldn't get a patty because it was <laughs> everything was locked down. So started it at home. You know, now there's a squad. Now the family are, are supporting it. There's a little trailer. <laughs> You've gone from small, small festivals to big festivals now. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did something yesterday. Met someone who actually provides stock for Asda. Oh, wow. So you, you just be in somewhere. Yeah. So you got to be somewhere. you got to take the step. you got to believe in it. And as you know, you know, Patty Box owner... Um, and founder Sarah Davis you know she still has her full-time job and yeah. she's still doing that side hustle to grow this business on the side so it is definitely definitely something that you can do just don't sit letting it tick 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 thinking that you don't have everything mm. oh I don't have this so I can't do it oh I don't have that oh oh no oh maybe next year i don't know how to plan i'm not really good at that you know (laughs) like you just start you fall you get back up you go again okay ready yeah that was deep yeah, it's all about, as you know, it's all about your goals and what you put down and what you speak out and what you want to get out of it. Yeah. Next one. Self-improvement habits. This kind of links to the last one. Mm. Let's make it short and snappy. What are some specific habits or practices you've recently adapted that have made a significant difference in your life? Um, I think significant difference in my life has very much been changing my pattern on social. So before I'd wake up, boom, I'm on social, just Mm. sitting there until it's time for me to get up, get ready for work. Mm. Um, I think it's really important before and after to journal. So I journal in the mornings where I could be at my desk, but it's very important. I wake up, I recalibrate, I meditate, I pray, I get up. I think about what's going on for the day. And then at the end of the day, I just decompress. Um, Before it would be work, 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 get in the bed, go to sleep. Now it's very much get in bed, decompress and just go through the day um, journaling, reflecting. How can I do better? What did I do wrong? And yep. And then we move. So journaling, prayer and not making technology and social um the be all and end all okay next one overcoming regret is there anything you regret not doing sooner in your journey how have you turned that regret into a learning experience there's another question after by the way oh you got two yeah 
I think one of my regrets is putting everything into my nine to five and not starting my personal projects earlier, which is why I said to you, mm-hmm. like start. I've always had goals as far back. Um, I've just always put it off, like swimming. <laughs> I put it off, I put it off, I put it off. Creatively Minded was birthed out of the pandemic mm. where I was journaling. I'm always designing something. Yep. I'm always putting something together. And I, my end goal is very much to have an app and have stationery mm-hmm. proper stationery love stationery if we could show you the drawers <laughs> <laughs> so it's very much not putting all my focus into my nine to five that's my regret and leaving it late to get started i definitely 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 will encourage anybody if you have a vision if you have a dream if you have a passion if you have a desire do not put it off do not do not say to yourself i got a bit more time because i'm still young but i'm also older mm-hmm. um and there i could have been a lot further ahead if i started some of my goals and my plans earlier do you think you could have done this podcast earlier though with no. where you were no okay no. No, 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 no. So no. there's a time and a place. There definitely is a time and there definitely is a place. But if it's um, doable, do it. Yes. The reason why, and I, uh, since I've done the podcast, a lot of people ask me, how did you start your podcast? You know, you're really brave. Like, I didn't, never wanted to chat my business. <laughs> never. Very much still has that mindset. I never wanted all of my business to be out there. Yeah. Um, which is why I don't, oh, I promote it now because, you know, I speak to friends and they're like, why don't you promote it more? Mm. Um, but I ne- my intentions was never to have a podcast. My intention has been very much to do stationery. Yeah. Um, but now I find my purpose in not just doing stationery, tie it in by, you know, my reflection pieces. So, you know, you can very much listen to this podcast here. You know what, actually, I want to reflect and do something different. Like, I've got a reflection journal, Mm. you know, that ties in, you know, the little handouts that I do after every single podcast, it all ties back in Mm. and starts building that stationary catalogue of digital products. Okay. Next question, which links... And is there any personal regrets that you wish you could warn your younger self? I didn't give, I didn't give, mum had some of these questions prior. However, some questions were implemented after thinking stages. So go again. Okay. And is there any personal regrets you wish you could have warned yourself at a younger age? Do you know what? Don't be so hard on yourself. I think I was very, very hard on myself as a young girl. I always felt like I had to prove something because I've made a hiccup. I don't have that many friends or I've fallen out with someone or my mum and dad are no longer together. You know, I've got to prove to my mum now that I can get through uni. I had a teen pregnancy, so I've got to prove to my dad and my parents now that I'm going to make it through school when I'm going to be able to get all my GCSEs and my A-levels. You know, my mum and dad weren't together and then it was very much, I'm going to prove that I can still, you know, get and work through everything that I need to. You know, and then I and then I have you. I had you when I was 21 and it's very much I'm going to prove even though I'm not with your dad that I can raise you to be the best person and you still have your dad be present in your life. So I think if I was younger, I would most probably be like, stop trying to prove a point. And I've done it. I said it on one of my podcasts. Stop trying to prove to the outside world who's really not interested um that you have to do this and you have to live this way and you have to do these things because I think I would have been a lot easier on myself and not as like I don't regret being adventurous because I've had a great life (laughs) I have I've met some great people um I've experienced within reason like because people can take this and go but within reason I've I've experienced things, I've tried things, and you know what? I've been burnt, 
but I've also had some good times. I've been in relationships and not, they haven't worked out, but I've had some great moments in them. So I wouldn't say, oh, I want to turn the clock back and I don't want those things to happen because, yeah, those things happen because it made me who I am. And I'm able to sit here and guide you and instruct you on how to be better and do things better. And it's not about you making the mistakes that I made. It's preparing you that the mistakes that you do make, because we all make mistakes, you know how to manage yourself through the mistake. There's no point saying, oh, you're going to be perfect and nothing. I'm not going to be like my mom. I'm not going to be like my dad. I'm not going to do that. Like, you've got tendencies of both of us. So whether you like it or not, you're going to be both of us. <laughs> it's just, you know, when I'm, when you're acting like your mom and those are not the best parts of your mom, how do I improve this? So, you know, it doesn't have an impact on my other relationships. Mm. That was good. Digital detox. How do you manage screen time and social media consumption to ensure it doesn't interfere with your mental health or productivity? Ah, uh, well, this is um, you this can is, get so consumed. I answered this before. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I didn't expect her to answer that question but, so soon. No, it it, it digital. If you just want to call it out, digital detox for me is. Uh, social discipline like everything is news there's news you can get news everywhere i don't read in a newspaper mm. because it's just not every news is good news and yeah. there's a lot of trash on social yeah um, a lot of forwards a lot of bad news a lot of misery a lot of and it sounds silly but it's a lot of fake relationships whether it's female to female um friendships or female and male you know there's this whole pretense of this is how life is life is so great i'm amazing uh, like you can get caught up thinking this is the life that i want but that's not me mm. um so social detox is very much i wake up in the morning and i reflect on who i want to be Social detox is being at my nine to five and knowing I don't need to be on social media. Social detox is last thing at night. I can have a browse, but I'm not going to sit here for four hours. Mm. Um, like I most probably sit there for about an hour as I go through cat's memes and <laughs> everything that she's forwarded me, um, <laughs> which is a great time. I have a great time catching up on that but it's like sometimes i'm very quiet and it's not just social sometimes it's whatsapp as well groups chats everything and people might be like oh why are you so quiet or where are you gone or where you been and it's like i've got to discipline myself to make sure that i don't get lost mm. you'd never really liked whatsapp anyway <laughs> uh next one judging that was not judging juggling juggling what are you doing are you <laughs> <laughs> uh, juggling responsibilities how do you balance the demands of life personal life work and passion projects without feeling overwhelmed so it's m focusing on overwhelming yourself how do i stop feeling overwhelmed <sighs> yeah just going for a walk mm. getting in the car um randomly going to nana's and just sitting <laughs> on the couch and going to sleep um going to church on sundays um being around my network being mm. around people that lift me up you know um reminding don't... yourself yeah it's very much just don't be too hard on yourself because you can. Next one. Stress management. What are your favorite techniques for managing stress, especially during busy or challenging times? Managing stress. Oh, I'm in the Bible. Like, I have, as you can see, I've got loads of Bibles. And there's more up here. Um... But yeah, I'm in the Bible and it's very much doing research and study. I think early morning prayer keeps me in line with prayer as well when I have to do and lead prayer. What, I, what about for someone who isn't within that life? 
How, what, what advice would you give them? For someone that doesn't pray? Yeah. It's very much journal. Okay. Write your thoughts and write your feelings and express exactly it is. Sometimes you just actually just feel like you want to scream and you're like, what am I screaming for? Um, and you're not in a place where you can scream. You're not in a place where you can just be like, <laughs> um, and sometimes you want to have a go at people because mm-hmm. people don't treat you right. And sometimes people don't appreciate you. And, you know, this can be in any type of relationship, even, even family. And you're like, Argh. so, I journal if you one thing I do I have paper galore and I journal with my phone so Use a if you app. if you don't like writing like type type mm. relentlessly on your phone if you feel like you want to have a rant and you feel like I'm just lost and confused write it write exactly how it is and then read it back and Sometimes people are like, oh, maybe I should send it to someone. Not everything needs to be sent, but get it out. Don't keep it in because you keeping it in and bottling it in, you just suppress it. You just suppress it. Meaning like a fizzy drink that you drop on the floor and or you shake up. As soon as you open it and you get to that boiling port point, you're going to burst and you're going to mm-hmm. explode and you're going to bleed on someone else. Yeah. Um, without realizing someone who you didn't need to drench in all of your madness and all of your lost and confusion is now like what did i done what the hell so write journal if you're not into praying and you don't know how to pray if you don't know how to study the bible and we had this conversation early like there's so many others and i've got it here like there's so many ways and guides and stuff that can teach you cover to cover Bible study. Like, um, I was just showing that's what I was showing. Cover to cover one. Bible study. Yeah. There we go. Um, like sometimes when you don't know where to start, literally just literally find a character that you you. Sometimes I'm like, mm, I want to know about Hannah. I'll just go on Google. I'll see what resources are available. I'll see if it's what I was looking for. And then when I got a little background, I then go to my Bible because usually online you can see what references. It will tell you what scriptures to look at, you know, where to go. And I've got different Bibles. And and it's really important to have different Bibles. I have study Bibles. I have Bibles for women. Um, and a character like Hannah would be really good in my women Bible because mm. they'll give a nice synopsis and overview and description of who she is, why, where she came from and how she could have an impact just as a character on your life. Mm. Are you, is, there, is there a Hannah in you, for instance, you know? So it's really important to find your outlet, but not an outlet where you're just prodding and poking at people and I you know not everyone can because not everyone feels comfortable because I ha- I was been there but a counsellor mm. having a counsellor very expensive but you know you don't play with your health yeah okay um 